Hey guys, Morphologist here again with a new tutorial on Space Engineers. This time around, I'm going to teach you how to make your own launch tubes using gravity generators and mass cubes. Now, if you're a sci-fi fan, you know that launch tubes are a pretty big part of a lot of sci-fi shows, especially the big one, BSG. But more importantly, launch tubes can perform an actual function, and that's to accelerate your ship to maximum velocity in a very short period of time and short space. This will allow you, say if you're on a ship, to accelerate past an enemy's defense, or accelerate fast enough to avoid oncoming enemy fire in a defensive situation. Luckily, building launch tubes isn't an extremely hard project if you're new to space engineers. You will only require some knowledge of how gravity generators work, in addition to how center of mass can affect the way your ship will accelerate out of the tube. But don't worry, I'll explain all of this in my video so that even newer players can understand. If you want to download the map featured in this video to follow along, you can go ahead and download it in my Steam Workshop by going to the info section of this video. So, without further ado, let's get started. One of the first things you're going to have to understand is how gravity generators work and what each selection actually means. So let's start by looking at the options in a gravity generator. After you've placed your gravity generator, you can simply go up to the control panel and press K. Here you can see that we have four primary options, field width, field height, field depth, and acceleration. So that you can better understand what each of these parameters actually mean in Space Engineers, I've created this diagram to assist you in understanding how the width, height, and depth relate to the three-dimensional world. These three parameters essentially change the three-dimensional size of your gravity field, and they are relative to the side that the access panel is located on. So if I'm facing the panel, the depth will be from where I'm looking straight forward. The width will be from my left to my right, and the height will, well, be exactly as it sounds, the height of the gravity field. Increasing or decreasing any of these parameters will expand or contract the size of the field equally on both sides depending on which you choose. Understanding this is instrumental to being able to set up very localized gravity fields. That means that if I walk into the tube, I'm going to be launched out, but I won't be launched out anywhere else in my ship, which I'm sure you can understand would be quite inconvenient. So now that we've covered the basics of gravity generators, let's move on to building your launch tube. I suggest you start with a platform. I've already got my own map made, so I'm going to use my own map to start building off of. Next, let's clear your toolbar of all existing items. You can do this by right-clicking each item. Afterward, add the following items to your toolbar. A gravity generator, a small reactor, a heavy armor block, an angled heavy armor block, a cockpit, a piston, a blast door block, a connector, and finally, an interior light. After you've added all of these items to the toolbar, select New Station on the lower right-hand corner of your menu. Afterward, find a place that you would like to place your new station platform. It should be a place that doesn't have any gravity fields yet already built. This way you can understand how to construct it before you move on to putting it in your own station or ship. You can press P to select the color of your new station platform. I like white, so I'm going to select white. You can do whatever you like. Next, let's drag out a plane of heavy armor blocks that will become your station platform. To do this, ghost your block against the station platform already built, hold Control shift and then drag out using your left click button. After we've got our new platform, let's get it powered up. So let's place your small reactor on the corner of your new platform. Next, it's time to place your gravity generator. I'm going to place mine pretty close to the center just to start off with. I might move it later to get it out of the way, but this is just so I can set up the width height and depth correctly. I'm going to be placing my launch tube opposite of the control panel on my gravity generator. So now I need to figure out how far the panel is from the edge of the platform where I'm going to start my new launch tube. To do this, I can count the blocks by coloring every other to figure it out. It looks like I'm approximately 10 away from the edge of the platform. So the number I'm going to want to use is not 10, but instead 20, because remember it expands equally on both sides for each parameter. To access the control panel, simply go up to the panel, look at it, and press K. Once inside, you'll see the width, height, and depth. The one that I need to adjust is the one in front of me, and that's depth. So I'm going to set that to 20, like I said earlier. I'm going to set the height to around 30, and the width to roughly around 20. But for now, the most important parameter is the depth. So let's see if I got it correct. Sure enough, my estimate was pretty dead on. The edge of the platform reads zero gravity, which means my gravity field is highly localized, just how I want it. Now that we've completed this first step, it's time to start creating our launch tube. 
To be efficient, I highly suggest you use symmetry mode because it's probably going to be the same on both sides. To do this, take out a heavy armor block and find the middle of your platform. Then, after you've selected where you want your symmetry to start, press M. A plane will appear. If the red plane isn't working for you, hit M until you've got the right symmetry set up and then left click. You've now got symmetry mode activated. Hit escape once you're happy with your symmetry. To toggle symmetry mode on and off, just hit N. It will remember where your symmetry is set. After you're happy with the location of your symmetry plane, drag out a line of blocks that you want to be the length of your launch tube. For me, I'm going to make mine 25 cubes long. Then, I'm going to make it around 3 wide. Good, now I want to drag out both sides of my launch tube. So I'm going to drag another plane around 3 high and the full length of my launch tube. Now my launch tube is almost complete, and it's time to start adding the interior angle blocks. That's going to give me the look of a launch tube. So I'm going to take out my angled armor blocks and drag them out the full length of my tube. To drag out just a line of blocks, simply hit control and drag much the same way you did a plane. I'll repeat this process for the top part as well. The final step in the structure of your tube is to add a roof. So I'm going to drag out a plane of blocks again, but this time over the top. After this, it's pretty much done, and it's time to start adding the components that will make this tube actually function. So I want you to go all the way to the end of the launch tube towards the end that you want your ship to emerge, and start by deleting every other block on the ceiling and on the floor up to three blocks. This is to make room for the gravity generators that we're going to add next. Now we're ready to set those gravity generators into place, but we're going to set them in phases. So let's first start with the ones furthest from the entrance to the launch tube. We're going to first place two on the top and bottom so that the panel faces inward, and we're going to place them parallel to the direction that we want our ship to travel out of the tube. Once you're satisfied with their location, access the control panel of your gravity generators by pressing K. Then, find the two gravity generators that you've just placed. They'll be the highest number on the list. After you've selected both by holding Shift, you can name them into a new group. I'm naming mine Grav Gens Far, so I remember that they're the furthest away from the entrance of my tube. Next, I'll repeat this process two more times for my remaining four generators. Each time, making sure that I name them in accordance to how far they are from the entrance of my tube. So the next ones I'll name Middle, and then the last ones I'll name close. Once you've completed this step and you're satisfied with the naming and how many generators you have, it's time to start localizing those gravity fields so that it only pulls down through the tube. So we're going to need to know the distance from the end of the tube to your first generators. To do this, place a beacon. This will give you a pretty good idea of how far away the first set of generators is from the entrance of your tube. As you can see for me, mine is around 60 meters away from the entrance of my tube. And that's for the set that's furthest away from my current location. Now that I have this number, I'm going to drop down a new cockpit so that I can go into the parameters of my first set of gravity generators. As you remember, I named mine Grav Gens Far for the ones furthest away. And since I know the distance is 60, I'm going to double that since it expands on both sides and make it 120. Good, now let's confirm just to make sure that it's at the edge of the tunnel like I want. And sure enough, it is. Now that I know 120 is good for the furthest set, I can pretty much estimate the distance I need to set for the last two. Since I know blocks are roughly two meters in size, and I know that each set is spaced approximately two blocks apart, I can pretty accurately estimate that each set should be roughly 10 meters apart. So I'll set middle to around 110, and close to around 100 meters. Good, now I've localized the height of the gravity fields for my launch tube, but I just want to make sure just to check. And sure enough, once I get to the edge, it instantly changes from 1G pulling downward to 6Gs pulling me through the tube. Great guys, we're almost there. Just bear with me a little bit longer. Now it's time to set up the part that's going to hold your ship in place until you would like to launch through the tube. And to do this, we're going to use a piston and a connector. So let's clear off a 3x3 block hole by the entrance of your tube. Following, let's drop down a few blocks below the platform so we have a place to mount our new piston. I'm going to drop mine down four blocks below my platform, so I have enough room to manipulate my new piston. After I've prepared my platform, I'm going to drop the piston on, and then, selecting my connector, I'm going to place that right on top of the piston. 
Now we want to cover up that hole a little bit by using the new blocks that we got in the last update for blast doors. So I'm going to drop those on the side so that I don't have such a big gap. Finally, I need to adjust the height of this piston so that once I drop my ship into the tube, it's not too low and my ship isn't too close to the bottom of my platform. So return to your control panel and find the piston you've just created. Then drag the maximum distance down to around 0.6 meters and hit reverse. Good, I'm pretty happy with that distance. Now that we've got the connector set up, we need to set up the gravity generators in the tube so that they don't expand too far outside of the tube and pull other things out of the ship. So let's drag down the depth and width of those fields down to around 10. This will ensure that no gravity is pulling me outside of the tube. Great, my settings worked perfectly. And in this last step, I'm just gonna test it out with the Mark III that I showed you earlier in this video. Also remember that the hotkey for locking your connector is P. Now that we have a working launch tube, the only thing left is to make sure that our ship is going to work with the design. Thankfully, setup is pretty simple. We first need to enable our center of mass by hitting K and then going to Info and selecting Show Center of Mass. After it's been enabled, a red dot with yellow lines coming out will appear which represents the center of mass of your ship. This is important to know for when you start placing your artificial mass, which is what you need to launch out of the tube. So taking my artificial mass, I'm going to place it near the nose of my ship. I've found this to be the most stable way to make your ship launch out of a tube. Additionally, if you found that your ship isn't properly balanced or your center of mass isn't directly in the center of your ship, you can adjust it easily by adding or subtracting blocks on either the top, bottom, or sides. The last thing you want to make sure that you have on your ship is a connector. This is the only way it's going to work with my connector design. If possible, connect it to a conveyor system so that you have the possibility of refueling your ship while you are waiting in the launch tube. But of course, this isn't completely necessary. Finally, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to toggle those artificial mass cubes on and off so that you don't get pulled towards the platform when you return. To do this, simply go into your control panel, select the artificial mass cubes by holding shift click, and save it as a new name. I saved mine as launch control. Once it's been saved, it can be accessed in your ship by hitting G and dragging it down to your hotbar. Once it's been dragged, it will ask you what you would like to set it up as. Set it up as on off. Now it can be toggled freely on or off to prevent you from colliding with ships that have artificial gravity. So that's it guys, now you have a working launch ship and a working launch tube. And that's all you need to know in order to make your own launch tube on your own station or your own ship. If you'd like to see how this design works before you build it for yourself, you can check out my map on the Steam Workshop. It will be in the info section. So that's it guys, thanks for watching again. Make sure you subscribe, like, and tell your friends. And I'll see you next time.